The new Russian regional aircraft, Il-1-14-300, continues to attract serious attention and remains the focus of intense work from both developers and regulatory authorities. Russia's aerospace and aviation sectors have been betting on the revival of domestic regional aviation for several years, and the Il-1-14-300 has emerged as one of the most major initiatives in this regard. Nevertheless, the path to certification and the start of operations has been difficult and uncertain, particularly in light of the recent announcement by Dmitry Yadrov, the head of Rosaviatsia, during a meeting of the Federation Council's Committee on Economic Policy on October 7, that certification has been postponed until 2026. Yadrov stated in his remarks that the EL-1-14-300 is currently in the final stages of certification and that the type certificate will be issued in the first quarter of 2026. This statement is in stark contrast to the assurances that were previously expressed in company press releases and at government meetings. Yadrov had already conducted a coordination meeting on certification progress in mid-September, during which the managing director of the Illusion Design Bureau, Daniel Brennerman, announced that the aircraft was expected to be certified by the end of 2025. Nevertheless, the regulator's stance has changed and the timeline has been adjusted. The L-1-14-300 is designed as an advanced variant of the IL-1-14-100. It is intended to accommodate approximately 66 passengers and is outfitted with state-of-the-art avionics and new TV-71-17ST-01 engines to enhance efficiency. Three prototype aircraft are currently conducting the testing program, which includes structural endurance tests and engine trials. In addition to the fine-tuning of systems, the development of a certifiable, dependable version necessitates the verification of operational suitability, safety, and durability. The project's primary objective is to replace obsolete turboprop aircraft from the Soviet era and imports, including the AN-24, AN-26, ATR-42 and 72, Bombardier Q-300, and CRJ-100 and 200. The regulator has been compelled to extend the service life of Russian airlines operating AN-24 and AN-26 aircraft to up to 60 years while they await replacements, although they are already struggling to maintain airworthiness, according to Yadrov. These aircraft serve in regions with inadequate infrastructure, unpaved runways, and severe climates, conditions that the IL-1-14300 was specifically engineered to handle. The United Aircraft Corporation, or UAC, is expected to deploy the first three IL-1-14300 aircraft in 2026 and produce a total of 51 units by 2030, according to Russia's Program for Aviation Development. The state-owned leasing company GTLK, the state transport leasing company, has placed a provisional order for 65 aircraft with the manufacturer. Anton Alikhanov, the Minister of Industry and Trade, stated in the summer that the first serial aircraft would be delivered to operators in August of the subsequent year. However, the certification delay may now necessitate a change in those plans. Notably, Aurora Airlines has been identified as a possible early operator and key partner of the IL-1-14300. Aurora and GTLK signed a letter of intent in September 2025 to lease three IL-1-14300 aircraft, with deliveries anticipated to commence in 2027. The leasing arrangement will be carried out by GTLK, the state leasing corporation. Initially, Aurora expected to receive the aircraft sooner, but production and certification delays forced an extension of the timeline. Aurora has reached a preliminary agreement to lease three IL-1-14300s through GTLK, with deliveries scheduled for 2027. The first aircraft handovers to clients, including Aurora, were previously scheduled for the second half of 2026. At the same time, several reports indicate that Red Wings Airlines is the IL-1-14300's inaugural customer. Yuri Slyusar, the general director of UAC, announced at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum 2024 
that Red Wings would be the first operator with a definite contract signed for the delivery of three aircraft in 2026. Using operational experience to identify early limitations and areas for optimization, UAC intends to continue supplying Red Wings with additional aircraft following the first deliveries. Red Wings is commercially independent in procurement decisions, despite operating within UAC's corporate structure. This arrangement, according to Sliusar, enables the manufacturer to maintain close control over the aircraft's first commercial use. The TV7117 ST01 engine has already been certified to have an accumulated operating time of over 2,000 hours across approximately 250 test flights, which is one of the technical achievements that have been confirmed during testing. The engine certification program includes this milestone to confirm its reliability and service life. The aircraft's design is also optimized for difficult environments, such as Arctic operations and unpaved airstrips, a critical attribute for regional networks in Siberia and the Russian Far East. Russian developers emphasize that the IL-1-14-300 is not just a replacement for outdated aircraft. Rather, it represents an actual improvement in modernization. It guarantees reduced operating costs, simplified maintenance, and full adaptation to the climatic and infrastructural realities of Russia in comparison to foreign counterparts. Project managers note that they maintain regular contact with regional operators, conducting weekly meetings in both online and in-person formats to solicit feedback and modify the test program as necessary. Airlines and leasing companies may need to modify their operational and delivery strategies in light of the current shift in certification deadlines. Postponing certification until 2026 will inevitably delay the start of deliveries and service entry. Given the obstacles encountered by both the manufacturer and the regulator, the recently announced objective of completing certification by the first quarter of 2026 appears to be more feasible. The Russian aviation industry faces a significant challenge in this context. It is anticipated that by 2030, Russian airlines will retire nearly half of their current commercial fleet, which includes approximately 230 domestically produced and 109 foreign aircraft, as well as 200 helicopters. Rosaviatsia reports that 76 Russian airlines, which collectively operate 1,135 aircraft, are responsible for 99% of all passenger traffic. Currently, 1,088 of these aircraft are operational. The country's transport infrastructure is in dire need of a strategic replacement with a new domestic type, as the current approach of extending the service life of old aircraft is unsustainable. In summary, the IL-1-14300 continues to be a prime candidate for the modernization of Russia's regional aviation fleet, particularly in regions with minimal infrastructure. Nevertheless, the uncertain certification timeline raises concerns regarding the timely realization of the ambitious objectives. The initiative is already entering its commercial phase, as evidenced by the involvement of Aurora Airlines through GTLK leasing and Red Wings as the official launch customer. Whether the EL-1-14-300 becomes the true backbone of Russia's regional aviation revival or remains an ambitious project postponed for better days, will be determined by test results, regulatory approvals, and finalized contracts in the coming months. If you find this video informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take our membership to encourage us.